Warning, this content is for entertainment and educational purposes only. What if I were to tell you that there is a way to lose fat and eat carbs? Not only some carbs, but a crap ton of carbs and get leaner at the same time? Well, it's true. We're going to talk about carb cycling in just one second. All right, before we get started, I'm just going to remind you about my team, Anabolic Bodybuilding Community. It is up and running right now. We have a private Q&A going on every Tuesday where you can ask your questions unfiltered, anything you want. Also, I choose a weekly topic where we do a group coaching call and we discuss that and there's an open forum where you can ask questions and talk to the other members. There's also some free courses up there on PEDs, other things, just special discounts on products all kinds of cool stuff. There is a link in the video description below. I still have the 40% off sale going on. Catch it now, the launch sale before it the price goes up. Anyway, let's talk about some carb cycling. Trust me when I say this, I have tried every damn diet <laughs> known to man over the years. I've done everything. I've done South Beach, I've done keto, I've done carnivore, I've done whatever you can think of. I've done Weight Watchers, I've done the body opus diet i've done everything you can possibly imagine shit loading everything and for bodybuilding i'm not saying for everybody the one that i have found to be the most effective for maintaining muscle losing fat and not making you absolutely fucking insane is carb cycling and i'm going to explain to you how carb cycling works for fat loss and why it works so well for a lot of people. Now, there's a few things that we know that are well-established scientific facts when it comes to dieting. Calories in, calories out. You can not believe it. You can want to think it's not real, but thermodynamics reigns supreme. It always is true. Whether you are capable of doing the math or not, whether you think it's real or not, thermodynamics is an immutable law of physics that is yet to be disproven. And yes, it does apply to open thermodynamic systems like the human body. Closed thermodynamic systems, open thermodynamic systems, it applies to everything in the universe. Just because the body is an open thermodynamic system does not mean that the law of thermodynamics doesn't apply. So with that out of the way, let's talk about how you can actually eat in a calorie surplus some days without violating CICO and the laws of thermodynamics with carb cycling. So here's the cool thing with carb cycling and advantage that it has over other diets, other low calorie diets, restricted calorie diets. I know a lot of bros like to do keto or carnivore to lose weight, which is perfectly fine. If that works for you, if you're able to stick to that diet, go right ahead and do it. I don't want to get into some sort of of philosophical debate it seems like guys that are carnivores or ketos are it's almost like dogma or religion to most of them if it works for you if you feel better if it's cured all your ails and you feel like a million bucks on it and you're growing like a champ just keep doing it the best diet is the diet that you can follow and stick to that's ultimately what it boils down to but here's the cool thing with carb cycling so with carb cycling, what we're doing is tricking the energy management systems of the body, the energy storage systems of the body. Your body can store carbs in three potential ways, liver glycogen, muscle glycogen, and lastly, as adipose or fat tissue is commonly known. Fats only get stored in one way in the body, and that is as adipose tissue, fat tissue. They either get burned as energy or stored as fat. There are some EFAs that get used for other metabolic processes and cellular repair, but it's very minimal. It's almost an insignificant amount when we're talking about daily caloric intake. So we know that fats either get burned as energy or stored as body fat. Carbohydrates can be burned as energy, stored as liver glycogen, stored as muscle glycogen, 
and then store it as body fat. Now, as you progress as a bodybuilder, and this is why carb cycling works so well for heavily muscled individuals, probably not as well for somebody who isn't as big, a large bodybuilder or a large man, power lifter, even women that are strong. I've seen women that can eat up to a thousand grams of carbs a day without getting fat. So, so let's think about this for a second. If you run in a caloric deficit, let's say six days a week, and you're mostly glycogen depleted by the time you get to that seventh day, you can eat in a caloric surplus and not get fat as long and this is the big caveat, is you keep your fats low and you run your carbohydrates high. And what we're doing here is tricking the energy management systems of the body. A large man or a bodybuilder, a heavily muscled person, can store north of a thousand grams of carbs as glycogen. I, at some points on my contest prep diet, I was eating upwards of 2,000 grams of carbohydrates on my high carb day and getting leaner at the same time. How is that possible, right? I, you know, some of those days I was close to 10,000 calories. I was eating 8,000 calories just in carbohydrates. On those days, I keep the fats as close to zero as I possibly can, knowing that any fats that I eat are more than likely going to be stored as body fat because they're not going to be used as energy. The body is going to prioritize carbohydrates, glucose as energy, always. The body also is going to synthesize any extra carbohydrates that I have if I'm glycogen depleted and potentially store those as glycogen. That's going to be synthesized as glycogen. Glycogen synthesis can take up to 48 hours. Keep that in mind. It's not, you're not going to see a huge effect the day that you do the, the high carbs. It's usually one to two days afterwards that you're going to see an effect on your physique where you fill out. And this is the magic of it. We can eat in excess that day because we have glycogen depleted and we have the potential to store these calories that are in a surplus north of what our metabolism, daily meta metabolism, our metabolic needs are, and store those as muscle glycogen, filling our muscles back out, replenishing our body, making us feel better, giving us a spike to the metabolism. It seems that it does seem to keep the thyroid from downregulating to a certain degree. There's only so much you can prevent that. That's probably, pro some of that's probably overstated, but it does seem to limit some metabolic adaptation. It also, it just, you know, you're going to feel better and look better as a bodybuilder. We have all seen that guy that overdiets for a bodybuilding show that is severely carbohydrate depleted when he gets to the show and looks like a string bean. Looks like a balloon that somebody let the air out of. It's not a good look on the stage. Ultimately, we want to get rid of as much body fat as we possibly can and keep our muscles as full as possible. And we know on those days, if we limit the, the intake of food to mostly carbohydrates and protein, protein, it's very unlikely that protein is going to get stored as body fat. There's so many steps that it has to go through. You'd have to go through gluconeogenesis. You'd have to, then that would... That the excess protein that you would be eating would be stored as glycogen potentially if you are in a surplus. And then you would have to be in some, it would be a third state you would have to go through where you'd have to be in lipo, go through liponeogenesis to actually store that as fat. It's more very unlikely that that's going to happen when you're eating um, protein and carbohydrates. Now, on the high carbohydrate day, typically I will keep the protein lower since carbohydrates are protein sparing. Another thing to think too with, the, with carbohydrates, there is the downstream effects of anabolism with carbohydrates, higher carbohydrates, more insulin, more insulin, more glycogen storage. You're going to have increased IGF-1. There's just a cascade um, uh, hormones. You know, we're going to signal mTOR, but you know, just a bunch of advantages that we have here and that we can leverage in the off season. So typically how I do this, I'll have one or two days a week where I pull calories really low. And I sometimes will even go down to zero carbs to thoroughly deplete glycogen stores to force fat burning. This is another step in the carb cycling process. So maybe we have one day a week or two where we go down very low on our carbohydrates or even close to zero 
car- zero carbs will push the fats a little bit higher. And we use that day for fat burning. Our medium days are going to be in a slight caloric deficit. There's going to be some carbs on the medium days, usually stacked around the workouts to keep our workouts going, to help us get through those days. And we're going to be in a caloric deficit on those days. And then one day per week, we do this high day where we push things very high. Now, sometimes when guys are super lean, I'll add in an extra high day. Maybe it will be 60% of what the typical high day would be. So if I'm eating 1,000 grams of carbs on my high day, I will do 600 on the day before to fill back out. Now, this I only do this when guys are at single-digit body fat levels. I find it only to be productive then, and then you even get a further effect of it. And I'll notice that people's metabolisms tend to speed, spin up even further when we do this, and they burn even more fat. You'll, you'll see it. You, any of my clients that I've worked with can tell you that they just get in the state where their metabolism just starts raging. And over time, what I have found from contest to contest or fat loss phase, even if you're not a competitor, from fat loss phase to bulk to fat loss phase, when you go back and forth again, your metabolism will upregulate. I dieted this year on more carbs and calories than I have done in my off season in the past. I don't think my calories ever got below like 3,400, 3,500 this contest prep. That was the lowest they got, maybe 3,200 on a low day. I don't remember, but we had to push the calories back up towards the end because I started losing weight too fast. And what do you think is going to be the effect on your muscle if you can keep the calories that high and lose body fat? You're going to have a fuller, better look. You're going to be filled out. You're not going to look like a string bean. You're not going to lose all your muscle. You're going to feel better. It's a very effective way of dieting and a very effective way of keeping your muscles full, a very effective way of keeping your metabolism high while on a diet phase. Now, there are times where you have to pull things low. I will say this. There are some people that just don't respond well to this. Something like one out of 20. I still have some clients that the only way they can get super lean is to run some sort of keto diet. Usually, I will put a carb load day in, one carb load a day a week, but we go zero carbs the rest of the days. It's sort of a traditional shit-loading diet or body opus diet that people would do back in the 90s. So that is the extreme case. I'll find that some people that they just need that. But overall, the look, I think, is way better than it is just running a traditional keto diet. And even guys that you hear talk about running keto diets on contest prep, they'll still do a loading day a lot of times. They'll pick it one day a week where they're eating a bunch of carbs or eating a bunch of trash food or going out to eat or whatever. That's typically how those diets work. So it's still, at the end of the day, it's probably a net wash. But with this, I find that you, over time, if you keep the carbs high and the fats really low on those high days, that you can get a better body composition outcome, even in the off season. Even in the off season, I, I find that that you can keep body composition better. I will run a slight deficit, or maybe even a, you know four or five hundred calorie deficit on my low days in the off season, just to keep body composition, insulin sensitivity in check. And that's another thing too. I don't want to get into it too much, but if you're running insulin, if you're an advanced bodybuilder, only advanced bodybuilders should probably be running insulin. The insulin is timed on the high carbohydrate days only. So you're limiting your exposure to insulin as well, maintaining insulin sensitivity, giving your gut a break. That's another advantage here that we have on the days where we pull the food down really low, even in the off season, even on contest prep, you're giving your gut a break to catch back up. It's just a fantastic way of dieting. I've never found a better way personally. I'm not a diet dogma guy, like I said before. You have to pick the diet that works best for you. But I think if you give it a try, it's probably the most optimal way for somebody that's heavily muscled, someone who's a physique athlete, even a gym bro who just wants to look sort of like a bodybuilder or a power lifter or an athlete. I think it's the most optimal way to diet. All right, folks, let me know what you think about carb cycling. I appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you for your support. Take care. For coaching or consultations, head over to www.anabolicbodybuilding.com to book your spot today. I can help you with optimizing hormones, fat loss, muscle gain, physique, 
athletic performance, nutrition, and health. For more information, shoot me an email at bigp3rd at gmail.com.